the most electrifying man in DC Entertainment. You should look at McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, Black Adam. Hailed as the slave who became champion, the mortal Teth Adam was bestowed the powers of the gods, transforming into a fearsome, superpowered being at the utterance of a single magic word, Shazam. He freed his people from the king of Kandad before grief over the loss of his family turned to cold fury, and he became entombed in his vengeful actions. Nearly 5,000 years later, Black Adam is freed from his slumber and finds himself in a world he does not recognize. Now he must try to see himself not as Kondog's destroyer, but its savior. First, before we begin, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the new Black Adam movie figure that we could have a look at in this review. Going ahead now and taking the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. We're going to start first in inches. Black Adam, in this case, is about six and three quarters of an inch tall, or he's going to be roughly, I say roughly, I mean he's exactly 17 centimeters in height. And one size comparison I certainly want to make more of wishful thinking than anything else. I'm going to move over Black Adam. I'm going to bring in Henry Cavill's Superman. Now there's rumblings that Superman may appear at the end of Black Adam, and time will tell if that's certainly the case. But I certainly hope at some point in the movie verse, these two are going to clash with one another. On to now the figure's accessories. Black Adam comes included with the same circular black stand as we've seen countless times already. Branded down below, there's the DC logo. Up to the corner of that, there's a singular peg that's going to attach the underside of either one of Black Adam's feet. See, he actually has it on both the sides. The figure actually stands fine on his own, but it's always nice when companies take the time to include display stands. McFarlane's team is one of the few companies still left behind that actually still includes display stands with their figures, and I appreciate them for doing that. You move that to the side, the figure also comes included with a trading card. And not figure photography in this case, no way. Dwayne would not have any of that. We actually get ourselves an image of Dwayne The Rock Johnson posed in his Shazam costume. One thing you may notice, though, if I hold it up next to the figure, is that the lightning bolt seems a lot more tarnished in the actual photo. And I think it's also the case like that in the movie. Now, it's probably going to be glowing at some point, too, which is probably why they made this so yellow on the actual suit itself. Apparently, he was supposed to wear a muscle suit. And The Rock stepped in and said, no, 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 if I'm working out, I'm, I'm going to put the time in the gym, then I want to wear a skin-tight suit so I actually can show off my musculature. So he actually doesn't wear a muscle suit in the movie. And then, of course, on the back, real name is Teth Adam with a good substantial paragraph read. You can either read for yourself, or it also happens to be the same thing I also read at the beginning of this video. I'm going to move that also to the side and add that to the rest of my trading cards. The figure also comes in clue with a couple of lightning bolt effects. And when we had a look, though, at the Flash TV series Flash, he came in clue with these. And I thought, hey, those would be ideal to come in clue with Black Adam. Little did I know, though, that they were already going to be including lightning bolt effects with their Black Adam. Actually, to be fair, though, Black Adams is a little bit more interesting. It spirals off a lot more different directions, unlike just the standalone lightning bolt. But if he had actually had gripping hands, which unfortunately this figure does not possess, he technically could hold one of these in his hands. But these actually work a little bit differently. I mean, first of all, they're translucent yellow plastic. They're made of more of a kind of that gummier, softer plastic. You notice on the bottom of them, they spiral. The idea is that you literally just take them and snake their way up the figure's arms. And you just keep twisting them and basically just get them to where you really want them to be. And they do a pretty good job of staying in place. You can do the exact same thing. I mean, we're literally just rinsing and repeating. But just to show you, you can also do the exact same thing also on the other side too. I actually did this at the beginning of the video. I don't have that in all the way. I did do that at the beginning of the video. Again, you can display Black Adam with both the lightning bolt effects added onto his arms. And because you don't have to attach them, at least plug them and peg them in place, you can remove them at any given point. You don't have to fully commit and marry to them. Unfortunately, though, I don't think it's by the result of adding these lightning bolts. I'm just going to remove this, and I'm going to remove this. I did notice, though, unfortunately on mine, there's a little bit of paint chippage. It's only probably only on mine, and I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that I was adding the lightning bolts, because again, you're not really touching the plastic necessarily, but unfortunately, either way, nonetheless, I've got a little bit of paint that's flaked off the end of it. Let me just talk a little bit about, first of all, the head sculpt that they did here for Black Adam. 
could it be safe to say that this is the one of the best likenesses of an actual living character that we've gotten as a DC multiverse? I'm sure Rock may have had something to do with that. Of course, approving the likeness of it. But that's probably one of the best Rock likenesses that we've ever gotten. Just again, to put that in perspective, I'm going to slide over Black Adam and bring, once again, Henry Cavill's Superman in. Cavill's was good. But it, I don't think it's as good, nowhere near as good as what we get here from Black Adam's Rock. I mean, the likeness is uncanny on this. And I'm sure anyone would probably be wanting to use this body and this head sculpt for other Rock characters. I mean, just look at that. Short of the fact that this figure doesn't have the very popular people's eyebrow. I mean, it's an uncanny likeness to the Rock. There are two versions of the Black Adam that are going to be released and currently released by the folks over at McFarlane Toys. This one, and then there's one that actually has a hood over top of them. We are going to be looking at that figure in an upcoming video. But I got to say, like, from a head sculpt standpoint, it checks all the boxes. Of what I mean, you look at that right away and you know who exactly that is. And that's a testament of how good a sculpting would be on a figure. As for, it certainly goes for the rest of his body. Now, again, to bring back the card, I'm only drawing this your attention to the fact that he does have, again, now this could be when he first comes to Earth, or at least into the present time, that he has more of the darker colors around his lightning bolt. This figure doesn't actually have it, but instead what it does have, though, is a more darker coloring of the yellow on the outer end of it. And then in the middle, they've kind of got more of this lighter custard yellow. It does give you somewhat the effect of having that actually glow, short of it does not actually really glow. And they've also outlined it nicely in a dark, not black, but dark gray. The costume is really handled well here. For considering a figure that's primarily an all gray, or in this case, kind of a really dark, dark gray costuming, they actually still managed to weave in there some really interesting sculpting. You see it there on the arms, even like this, this kind of script, scripture and scrolling that they've actually put on the back of his torso. Everywhere you look on this figure, there's never a, a chance where it's left off an opportunity for them to go in and start sculpting stuff. Even in his mid-torso, his abdomen area, they've also sculpted some really interesting looking. It kind of actually looks like he's got a bit of a mouth looking a little bit of like open stomach area. He has some really nice gold that they've also added here to the gauntlets on his forearms. He's also got that same gold that represents the front of his belt. Like it's again really... It still looks enough like the original comic book costume, but it modernizes it in such a way that it's still, I mean, it's very much familiar. I mean, I can look at this right away and it looks like Black Adam. They haven't reinvented the costuming at all. Very, very cool looking sculpting though. I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. Again, you got the sculpting there handled well here on the gauntlets. Now, they what have likely done here is they just brushed the gold over top of it. So you still got the darker plastic underneath sort of peeking its way through. Nice, really nice gold that they ended up using here. And as we get a little bit lower down here on the legs, uh, all these little lines. Now, these lines aren't, again, painted onto the costume. I can run my finger across it. They're all grooved into the plastic itself. And they change their patterning. So you've got some going this way. And then this side, you kind of got them more on an angle. Like, there's a, it's a really elaborate suit for something that really isn't just an all-gray suit with a little bit of gold accent. Speaking, though, of gold, he also has the gold also done here, down below here in his boots. And again, if I just to move the joints out of the way... It looks like they have also painted the joints. I don't think that's actually gold plastic. You can see there's a little bit of black peeking at the top. But again, that's probably what they've done is they've taken the black or this dark uh, uh, gray plastic and they've just painted the gold over top of it. Really happy with how this one turned out. Again, likeness, fantastic. For the uh, articulation, I'll start first with the really nice head sculpt we've talked a lot about certainly in this review. The head rotates all the way around. It does look down and it does look up. Actually, it goes to about there. So if you did have yourself like a flight stand, for example, I'm only just pretending to do this with my hands right now. But yeah, you could easily have Black Adam looking as if he's flying. I am a little disappointed the fact that the figure didn't have some swappable hands. I mean, he only has really punching closed fists. Maybe they could have also included some gripping hands, but maybe the other the other Shazam that we the other Shazam the other Black Adam that we're going to be looking at maybe has a different type of hands instead of the gripping hands or the punching hands we have right here. As for the shoulders, though, the shoulders do come out beyond the point of a ninety degree angle bend. You almost could give the rock some jumping jack pose. You can also take the arms and, of course, rotate them all the way around. Now, he does have, again, these socketed joints. These socketed joints are there more just to conceal the joint, not necessarily giving you any additional articulation. The figure does have also a bicep swivel. He also possesses a double hinge on the elbow, which is a nice thing to see. And he, of course, has the rotation in the hands. The hands are a little on the tighter side for me, at least, but they do hinge also back and forth this way. And, yeah, you can rotate them all the way around. Just a little tight on mine. The upper torso is on a very generous ball joint. I really like the way they've actually made the, the lightning bolt 
uh, be a sculpt that actually goes beyond the point. So instead of just cutting it right here, they've actually ex extended it. So you get a kind of a interesting layered effect when we actually tilt the torso back. The figure also has a lower torso articulation point. Now, unfortunately, though, when you are rotating the lower abdomen area, if you move it too far to the one side, it does leave a little bit of a gap space right here. But most of the time, I'm probably going to be having the figure just straight anyways. Legs split out. They are on a ratcheted joint. You can't get a full split. That's as far as I, I can at least get it on here on the figure. You take the legs and move them forward and back. There's a swivel, mild swivel at the top of the thigh. Figure has a double hinge on the knee. There is no articulation here in the boot because I think it's just a continuation of the lower calf, but he does have at least to his credit articulation here in the ankle this way. And the figure, of course, can rock his ankle this way with some decent toe articulation there as well. Super, super happy. I actually really should have brought in as well the John Cena Peacemaker because I think that would also have been a good example of how I feel like where we've come along when it comes to movie tie-in figures this might be the best of the batch. Again, we just slide over, just correct his feet here for a second. Just slide over here, Black Adam, and once again, bring back in Henry Cavill, which I thought was a great, great figure and still think it's a great looking figure. But I mean, when you're comparing the likenesses and the skin tone that they used, Henry Cavill's Superman is a little more on the paler side, but I got to say like they, they've nailed the likeness of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Whether or not the movie will actually be good or not, or will it be just yet another rock movie, I'm still excited to see what they're going to be doing with Black Adam. Black Adam's always been like one of my, not one of my favorites, but he's pretty high on my list of favorite DC villains. I gotta say, like, rock was a good choice to pick for it. Whether or not, again, it's going to be a rock movie, I'm still super excited to see it when it comes out. Apparently, the Black Adam movie has been something that Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been championing for, I think, several years already. He has already advocated the fact that if there ever was a chance to cast for the, the lead of the Black Adam movie or even have him appear in another superhero movie, he wanted to be front in line for that. Well, he got his wish. Now we're finally getting ourselves a Black Adam. I don't know if I would say a Black Adam was worth having as a solo movie. Black Adam could also have appeared in a Shazam movie, which is strange because I don't think Shazam is appearing anywhere in the Black Adam movie. It's just going to be a standalone solo story, the story of why he becomes Black Adam, the way that we know him today. Now, when it comes to also rumors, apparently Henry Cavill has been getting fitted lately for his Man of Steel costuming. Whether that's the case of he actually appears in the movie of Black Adam, even if it's only the last couple of minutes at the end of the movie, even like it's if it's post credits, we know at least there's something in the pipeline that something is going to be leading into a potential sequel where either he will clash with Superman or he will clash with Shazam. Either way, I'm super excited. What do you guys think, though, of the upcoming Cap Black Adam? Are you guys excited for the new Black Adam movie? Or do you think it's just going to be another Rock movie? Rock seems to have a lot of movies where he basically plays the same character over and over again. Is this just going to be like the Scorpion King just wearing a different outfit? I don't know. But I will certainly be excited to stand in line when the new Black Adam movie does come out. But what do you guys think of the figure? Is this one of the best, if not the best, movie likenesses that we've ever gotten as an actual DC multiverse figure? I mean, the Henry Cavill was good. And even like the Batman that we got, even though, I mean, most of the, the cowl is covering off Ben Affleck's face. But I got to say, like, this is probably the best, first of all, movie figure that we've gotten in the DC multiverse line. But I think it's also as far to say it's the best rock figure that we've ever gotten as well. I'm sure there's probably going to be customizers taking this figure and just dressing them differently. And maybe we'll get, I don't know, customizers coming up with different rock figures just based on this mold alone. A big thank you, though, to the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide the sample of the new Captain Captain, I keep wanting to say Captain Marvel, Black Adam, Black Adam figure that we could have a look at in this review. If you enjoyed the review, want to hit it with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and certainly want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. While we have right now wrapped up things for Black Adam, we will actually be looking at the rest of the wave for Black Adam. So if you are certainly wanting to see the rest of the figure line, stick around and stay tuned to this channel because those videos will be coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.